Halfland, an ahistorical prehistory. The Battle of Fursey Heath. In the 132nd year of the Common Reckoning, a halfling army led by Odo Eartuft defeated a Skelding force at the Battle of Fetchfield Farm and advanced toward Great Hall, burning and killing as it came, driving the fleeing Skelding population before it. Gunlaf, the king of the Skeldings, had been unprepared for the halfling attack. As the Skelding population panicked and sought safety on the far bank of the Silver Stream, he hastily mustered whatever forces he could and marched out to meet his halfling foes. His army was smaller than he would have hoped. Gunluff had called all of the captains of the Skeldings to his aid, but it took time for the captains to summon their liegemen and raise levies of their peasants, time which Gunlaf did not have. The force he was able to raise amounted to some 500 men. The core of it was some 200 armoured warriors, bearing shields and spears. Many of these were Gunlaf's personal retinue, the king's spearmen. The balance of the army was comprised of some 100 armoured cavalry and 200 unarmoured archers. The halflings had suffered significant casualties at the Battle of Vetchfield Farm, but some of those losses had been replaced as halflings flocked to Odo's banners to share in his success. All in all, Odo's force now included about 600 halflings. These were divided into four groups, advancing in line abreast. As the halflings crossed the moorland, known as Fursey Heath, they saw a line of Skelding archers moving toward them. Behind the screening archers marched Gunlaf and his spearmen, followed by the Skelding cavalry. Gunlaf ordered his cavalry to move up on his right flank. He also ordered his archers to push on forward. The archers on his right did so, but those on the left hesitated. Odo chose to adopt a defensive posture. On his right was a low hill. Odo sent two small groups of halflings armed with bows and slings to form up behind that hill with the intention of then taking a position in the trees atop it, where they could rain missiles upon the advancing Skeldings. To the left of the hill, Odo arrayed a line of spear halflings. To their left was a small wood, and here Odo placed another group of halflings, some armed with spears and others with bows and slings. On his far left flank, beyond that wood, was a final group of halflings. Gunlaf ordered his men to advance upon the halflings in the centre. The left-hand group of archers still held back, but those on Gunlaf's right continued to march forward, followed by the spearmen. As the Skelding archers advanced, they came within range of the halfling troops positioned in the wood to Odo's left who loosed a devastating volley of arrows and slingshot at them. The Skelding archers died in droves. Many of the survivors fled. Their formation was shattered. The halflings cheered. But the king's spearmen did not waver. They continued to march forward, stepping over the dead bodies of the archers. Gunlaf's cavalry also pushed forward, veering to their right, heading for the group of halflings in the open on the far left of Odo's lines. Nervously, the halflings prepared themselves for the onslaught of the Skelding horsemen. On Odo's right flank, the halfling missile troops advanced to the top of the hill and formed a line, ready to shower their arrows and slingshot upon the advancing Skelding spearmen. But now the archers on Gunlaf's left managed to pull themselves together and move forward to support the Skelding spearmen. As the halflings and Skeldings prepared for an archery duel on Odo's right flank, the halflings on his left flank shot various assorted missiles at the Skelding cavalry 
trotting toward them. But the horsemen disconcerted them. Their aim was lamentably poor, and so their shooting was ineffective. Back in the centre, Gunlaf detached a contingent of his spearmen and ordered them to charge the halflings in the wood. As the Skeldings approached, the halflings loosed a volley of missiles at them, intending to deal with the Skelding spearmen as they had with the Skelding archers. But the halfling arrows and slingshot were significantly less effective against the Skelding spearmen, who were carrying shields and wearing long coats of mail. Odo therefore ordered a group of spear halflings to countercharge the Skeldings. The two groups of spears clashed together, and a fierce fight ensued, in which the halflings had some initial success. But on Odo's right, the tide of battle was turning the other way, as the halflings atop the hill exchanged missiles with Gunlaf's archers. Both sides suffered casualties, but these were heavier among the halflings. And now Gunlaf ordered the main body of his spearmen forward, to support the group that he had detached to attack the halflings in the wood, and the halfling spearmen who had countercharged so valiantly were overwhelmed. Desperate to halt the Skeldings, Odo sent another group of spear halflings charging headlong into the ranks of the advancing Skelding spearmen, but to little avail. And on Gunlaf's right, his cavalry crashed into the halflings cowering before them. The spear halflings in the group stepped forward to meet the Skelding charge, but the horsemen swept them aside. It seemed that the halflings were being bested across the entire battlefield. The halflings had a moment of respite on their left as the Skelding cavalry pulled back to regroup, but the Skelding archers had now largely swept the hill on the halfling right clean of halflings. In the middle, the Skelding spearmen were getting the upper hand over the second group of spear halflings who had so bravely charged them. But that charge had bought Odo time, which he used to reorganise his centre, gathering the survivors together on the outskirts of the wood, preparing to make a last stand. The remaining halflings atop the hill on Odo's right melted away. The halflings on his far left braced themselves to receive another cavalry charge, and in the centre, the Skelding spearmen finished off the last of the spear halflings who had charged into them, and then Gunlaf led his spearmen charging into Odo and the halflings on the outskirts of the wood. That was a hard-fought fight, and the halflings had much the worst of it. But in the confusion, a group of spear halflings fought their way through to Gunlaf, and a halfling spear found its way past Gunlaf's shield, and pierced Gunlaf's mail, and ran through Gunlaf's shoulder. And Gunlaf fell, fell wounded, fell bleeding sorely, bleeding into the muddy trampled ground. And, for a moment, the Skeldings wavered. But the Skelding captains were not going to leave their king to be slaughtered like a pig in the bloody mire. Horns sounded, and the Skelding cavalry galloped across the field, galloped to his assistance, and drove the halflings back from where he lay. The surviving halflings withdrew deeper into the trees, awaiting the Skelding onslaught that would surely finish them. But no attack came. Instead, the Skeldings lifted their unconscious king from the ground, and carefully bore him from the battlefield, bore him back to Great Hall, where his wound could be tended. And thus ended the Battle of Fursey Heath. <laughs>